Well, happy St. Patty's Day, everybody. So, first thing we're going to do is drink a Guinness. Mm. I know the cold weather makes the Guinness smell so much better. So, so today, today we're going to be uh, cooking a beef tongue. Uh, actually, we're going to put it in a brine overnight. Uh, minimum of 12, 12 to 14 hours, it's even 24 hours is good, but we're going to make up a brine and uh, get the tongue in there and let it sit overnight. This tongue I got from the Wyndham Butcher Shop uh, in Wyndham, Maine, and that's where I get most of my meat that we don't shoot any of the pork, the ground pork, the bacon, the, uh, just a phenomenal place to do business with, uh, great reputation. Just wanted to give them a small plug. Um, but anyway, so, and since it's St. Patty's Day, I'm going to pour a shot of Jameson for me and a shot of Jameson for the brine. Uh, so, cheers. First thing, we got about, oh, probably a gallon of water in this tub. And uh, the idea is you want the tongue to go in and sit under the, it has to be submerged in water. And then we want roughly, the ingredients we're using is salt, sugar, garlic cloves, and uh, rosemary. Uh, rosemary spray somewhere around here. But first of all, we'll put the salt in. I like about a half a cup. And sugar, eh, about the same. Uh, maybe a quarter of a cup, maybe a little more. And we take our um, garlic and I crush up uh, about six cloves. Uh, oh, there's a garlic over there. I'm sorry. I mean the uh, rosemary. So we crush up our garlic and uh, Mind you, the brine, uh, we end up using, I usually use half brine, half cold water when I actually cook the tongue, which I'll be doing tomorrow. But um, all the garlic and everything gets cooked up, you know, with the tongue and it just adds to the flavor. And, uh, oh, some rosemary. And um, once you get it in there, you just basically want to make sure everything's mixed up good. Put a little more rosemary in, but make sure all your ingredients are mixed in as best you can. Basically make sure the sugar and salt. Like I said, we're going to be cooking with this tomorrow too, so probably put a little more rosemary, I can't quite smell it good enough. Then, we take our beef tongue. Uh, this is a beauty. And just wash it off, rinse it off a little bit. Cold water. As you can, as you can see, that's a beauty. That is, uh, that is a beaut. Um, I like moose tongue too, that's really good. Uh, pretty much any tongue is good, but um, moose is probably my favorite. I don't know what happened to that other shot of Jameson, but we have to put a shot of Jameson in the, uh, in the brine too. This is kind of tradition, especially on St. Patty's Day. And uh, I was introduced to this recipe when I was a kid. We were coming home one day and there was a dead moose beside the road, half frozen. My father got out and cut the tongue out with a Swiss Army knife. and. Uh, Brought it home, we cooked it up, and actually it was pretty good. So it's been one of my uh, favorites for a long time since I was a kid. And what we actually do, I'll show you obviously as the video goes on, but we're going to parboil this for about an hour and a half. Uh, and then what, what happens is that the outer skin of the tongue actually, you can peel it right off. And then what we do is we slice it up and we can either barbecue it on the grill or we can pan cook it. We can do, a, we can make a, uh, we can render some sauce. We get a couple of ideas, but. And then cover it with some onions and whatnot. But um, 
what they used to do in the old days was they would uh, actually put it in a, a just basically salt and water and put it on the back of the wood stove and cook it literally all day and that's how they would cook it and then when they get home at night they'd peel the skin off cut it up and fry it up and eat it that way so that's another way to do it if you have a wood stove going all day um, and let it you know let it just slow cook there's a couple different ways to do it but this is our recipe so uh, all right let's get this thing in the fridge well uh, the tongue has been in its brine for 48 hours uh, and we've been gathering sap and boiling all day and uh, I am just about froze through to the bone so I've been looking forward to this all day. So what we're going to do is uh, take the tongue out of the brine. Oh, does that smell good? Garlic and rosemary just hit me like uh, tongue bricks. Essentially what we do, uh, we put our tongue in the bad boy, huh? <laughs> and then we uh, want to take about half of this and then half water. Essentially we want to make sure we get all our garlic and everything in there. Um, and the rosemary. We're going to put about half brine, half cold water uh, to actually cook it in. So let me That's about half. Yeah. Make sure you get all your garlic and rosemary and all that stuff in there. You won't lose any of that. Just bring it right up over the top. Then what we're going to do is we're going to boil this. Bring it right to a rapid boil. And then when it starts to boil, actually we're going to back it off and just let it kind of uh, not simmer, but you know, uh, slow boil, rolling boil, if you will. No, slow boil. And uh, about an hour and a half, two hours. And then when that's done, we'll pull it out. You should be able to pull the skin right off. And uh, we'll actually slice it up. And then I'm going to pan fry it with a little bit of uh, a little bit of Cavoisier and Worcestershire sauce, uh, some onions. And it should be delicious. So. Okay, we brought that up to a nice boil, and then we're going to do like a real slow simmer for about an hour and a half or so, two hours tops, and uh, check in on it. So, that smells absolutely delicious. Well, that's finishing up. I'm going <clears> to <throat> saute up a little bit of garlic and onion in this pan and set it aside for uh, later. And uh, I'm going to top it off of that when I'm done. Um, I think that's pretty darn close. I'm going to give it another 10-15 minutes. But meanwhile, I'm going to prep this onion. Mm-hmm. 
skin just peels right off. This is pretty hot. Like any other cut of meat. Uh, look at that. Oh man. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Make great sandwich meat too, by the way. Um, phenomenal sandwich meat. As you can see, that makes some very, very good pieces of meat. Uh, makes a great sandwich. Um, a lot of things you can do with it, but uh, I'm just going to pan fry this with some onions and I'm going to more or less eat it like liver and onions, if you will. Uh, more of that style, but it makes a great sandwich for sure. Alright, let's get a little bit of butter melting. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to cook it real slow, sear it, and I'll fry it more or less. Uh, and butter for a little bit. I'm going to hit it with some pepper and Worcestershire sauce. Um, and you can see these pieces are just melt in your mouth. And once you've cooked the tongue, you don't have to, uh, you can actually just throw it in the fridge just like this. And um, you know, save it for later. Cook it later. And cook this really slow. Get those crisped up pretty good. I'm going to hit it with some uh, a bit of pepper. Safety first. My wife's sleeping. Set the smoke alarm off. They're filming. Little Worcestershire. Uh, a little bit of butter. Need a little more fat in there. Yeah, a little more black pepper. I'm gonna get this good one. Right, that smells good. Essentially, because I'm the only one eating today, I got me a plate of tongue. And I am going to. Smother it with onions, garlic and onions, and 
take our renderings. Right there, you got yourself a plate. plate Just for the occasion, I got some switchback ale that my good buddy Mike uh, gave me to try out. So I couldn't think of anything to have this with other than beef tongue and onions. Definitely want to crisp it up. The when you sear the outside like that, um, just gives it a really good texture. And then you drown it with the uh, Worcestershire, Worcestershire, and onions, butter, and garlic, pepper. How can you miss? Here's to, uh, here's to you, Mike. Looks really good. Very good, actually. I gotta get some of that. Um, if you've never tried a ton, you don't know what you're missing. And the first thing somebody asks is, what does it taste like? It doesn't taste like chicken. It tastes like tongue. It's very good.